He's got the glove. He'll protect his dad. Hot smash. Ozzie Smith over the first. A quick hitting. And at the end of one, no score. It was my first serious dinner at his family's. So much food. <laughs> this is Greg's favorite dish. Oh, and my first serious heartburn. And I learned some things. Oh, no, these are different. Tums has calcium. Most antacids don't. Of all these, the only one that helps wipe out heartburn and gives you calcium you need every day is Tums. Something my body needs anyway. I like that. Calcium-rich Tums. The insurance business can be a hazardous place, an uneasy economy, a jagged stock market, failed real estate, junk bonds. One company protects its policyholders by shunning risky investments, offering solid supplemental insurance coverage, combining prudent judgment with dedicated service. That company is Aflac. Aflac, insuring over 35 million people worldwide. So I'm barbecuing for 30. I got the best steaks, I got the cheap charcoal, and I got burned. Fire's out. Don't get burned by cheap charcoal. By the best. Kingsford, the sure fight. My customers look to me, to true value, for something they can't get in those big warehouse stores. They know I'll take time to answer their questions, and I've got the right products. Real true values, like this weed eater electric blower. It has an air velocity of 110 miles per hour. It's just 27.88. And their lightweight gas trimmer with a tap-and-go line advance. It cuts a 15-inch path, and it's just 69.99. You know, the name says it all. True value. Harry Carey and Steve Stone back at Rigby Field. We're going to the top of the second. And we're joined by Bob Green, whom you see there, the well-known uh, columnist of the Chicago Tribune. Not only the Tribune, I know it's traveling around the country. It seems like you must be syndicated in quite a few other papers. Yeah, I am all over the country, in Japan also, actually. But this is, uh, I told you, Harry, I feel like I'm a five-year-old kid up here. I, I could pretend not to be excited, but this is a thrill. Here's Langford on the very first pitch, landing a single to center. There's a guy who had struck out eight times in the first three games of this series, but the first pitch he wallops in the center field. How did you happen to get the idea of uh, writing this itinerary of your three young friends? Well, all summer long, the idea is three best friends from high school go back to their 25th high school reunion, and they realize the one thing they can't give themselves is the things we all have when we were kids, which is summers of friendship, and adventure and you know the promise of romance and no rules so the idea is in middle age these three guys decide to give themselves one more summer in the sun together and i guess i guess the reason i decided to do it is i can't think of anything i'd like to do better if you know find the find the best friends you had when you were a kid and 25 years later extricate yourself from your family and your job and take off around the country you know it's a funny thing because so many young people in the last couple of years have done that uh, I don't know with the same idea in mind, but we get a lot of notes from people who travel to every single ball ballpark in the country just uh, to see baseball at various stages. Yeah, and, and the thing is, we, there, this is, as, as Steve mentioned, this is my first novel after 13 nonfiction books. The reason is fiction is not many people can get the three months off. Um, and I just thought, you remember that old TV show, The Millionaire, where the guy yeah, gave yeah. a check for a million dollars every week? People get this, people understand this fantasy better than the millionaire because the millionaire was only offering money. This guy is offering a summer, this, this story is offering a summer with your best friends, and this, that's something you can't buy. There's a line drive foul. Uh, is the book on, uh, out for sale yet? It's just, it's just coming out now, and actually, Harry, one of the things I did, I send these three guys all over the country during their three months away from the job. Isn't that, thank you, Arnie. <laughs> three months away from the job. And one of the places we come is Wrigley Field, because I, I send them to Wrigley Field. I send them to Elvis Presley's old suite on top of the Las Vegas Hilton. I send them to an old girlfriend's surprise 40th birthday party in suburban Missouri. I send them to a convention of dental hygienists in Atlanta. I send them to a state fair. 
and to research the Wrigley Field part, I had never, as you know, I've been in a lot of basketball locker rooms lately. Yeah. I'd never been in a major league clubhouse. So I came here one night <laughs> and went down to the Cubs clubhouse, you know, and took notes, observed what was going on around me. And then when it came time to write that chapter, I had these three guys who would never, you know, these three guys who grew up like all of us do, wanting to be ball players, come, come into the, uh, come into the Cubs clubhouse, and walk through it and make those observations. It's, uh, I, I ran into Steve the night I was out there, and it's, um, I guess you guys take it for granted, but the first time you walk into a big league clubhouse, it's like nothing you've ever been before. <laughs> Here's a foul ball again, Mark Witten. Uh, Apparently you uh, there. You talk about uh, oh my you write about WGN there. Yeah, it didn't look that good when I was writing it on the on the word processor. <laughs> yeah, the the idea was these guys are sitting in a rib place somewhere at the beginning of their trip around the country, and they're watching WGN in the in the restaurant. And the main character, I guess, is modeled after me. Says, "Why don't we go to Wrigley Field?" So they drive to Chicago. Here's a high fly ball. So so make the catch. Don't worry about it. Okay, sorry about that. I'm watching you too much here. It's, uh, okay. I, uh, th they come to Chicago, and they know a guy in the Cubs front office. I mean, since it's fiction, I can make it up, right? And the guy leaves and passes, and they go down there in the Cubs clubhouse, and you start to realize, you know, we all, Ryan Sandberg comes in, and we all, you know, these guys are older than Sandberg. I mean, they're in their 40s. But Sandberg, because we all wanted to be Ball players when we were kids and the rest of us didn't make it. They look at Sandberg and he somehow and all of them seems older than they are because these the, the guys who make it to the majors, they're forever older than us because they've got something we're never going to get. Let me ask you, how about these girls you mentioned? Are they as pretty now when they're 40 as they were when they were 17? Well, that's one of the things they do also. They're 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 in Kansas City and they hear by coincidence that one of their first girlfriends is turning 40 years old. And there's a surprise birthday party for her in a Missouri suburb called Clayton, which I, I, I'm sure you're aware of. Yeah. And they go down to Missouri, and yeah, there's that whole thing, because the whole romance of all summer long, the whole, the whole idea of the novel is can you get back those feelings you had with your best friends when you were 17? Now, these guys are 43 at the time. The old girlfriend is 40, and yet it's summer, and they're together, and they're best friends, and here it is again. <laughs> Uh, there's a pitch of Todd Zeal. Line drive, center field. These Cardinals keep giving the ball. And their runners now at first and second with one out. There's a look from the Budweiser blimp right now flying overhead. Do you guys ever stop to think how lucky you are <laughs> to come to work here every day? Isn't that a beautiful sight? Unbelievable. Not a bad product either. I'm getting a little thirsty right now on this Father's Day. What's the, what's the final conclusion of this fiction of yours? Well, it, it's really, all summer long is really about the trip. They're not looking for anything. And I think that's the, the, the beauty of where they go is that when you're a kid, you don't look at your watch every day and you don't have a schedule and you don't, you're not checking off a, a checklist of what you have to get done. You wake up in the morning and you take off with your friends when you're a kid and all you know is that by midnight that night, something's gonna happen. So the real story is, can you get that feeling back? Can you can you take can you go with your friends and not have to accomplish something? And by the end of the book, I think what they figure out is that you can have that summer back. You can't be 17 again. You can never be 17 again. But you can. There, there's no rule that says you cannot have the best summer of your life in middle age when you find those friends again. Here's Geronimo Pena with a big hitter yesterday. He's three out of six in this series. All three hits came yesterday. Two doubles and a home run. And he was a big cog in the 6-3 to three Cardinal victory. The count on him, no balls, two strikes, one out. Runners at first and second. Bob Green, the celebrated author and columnist, is with us. Now the pitch. A little bit inside. One ball, two strikes. You think, you think that after your first fiction book, going to do this more often? I hope so, because you know what's nice about it, Harry, is you, for the first time, you can sort of pull out of your own imagination this dream situation and spend a year writing it and trying to, I don't know, it, I, it, this, this sounds... This That's mad. Base hit. Left center field. One run in. Well, they get by Dwight Smith. Two runs are going to score. 
And here comes Pena around the third base. That was a solid single that went through Dwight Smith's leg. Langford would have scored easily on the hit, but Zeal scored because of the air. And that ball might have been fielded too, but it was really hit hard. Goes as an RBI, and that will be for Pena, number 16, is number 15 this year. And then the air on Dwight Smith, as we'll take a look at it. So a single, the air on wow. Dwight Smith, and the end result is two cardinal runs. I don't think Dwight Smith had to make feel the ball on the side. It, was, it bounced several times in the center field. He had time to get in front of it. Here now is the eighth place hitter Tom Pagnozzi, who's had a good series, four out of nine. The infield comes in now because the Cardinals are out in front already, two to nothing, and they have their best pitcher going and Bob Tewksbury, just as do the Cubs and Frank Castillo. The pitch high and inside. You know, Bob, I was just thinking, as you were talking there, you know, there's a difference between radio and television of a ball game. Television, you see it. In radio, the announcer could use his imagination, his vocabulary, his personality, and uh, uh, paint whatever picture he would like to paint. Whereas on TV, he doesn't dare do that or he loses credibility because people can see uh, what, uh, what's going on. And I would imagine that in some sort uh, parallels to what you're talking about doing fiction and oh, doing yeah. fact. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you, you know, this, this is going to sound sort of stupid, but I was, as I was writing all summer long, I found myself being jealous of the three guys because, I mean, I, w I didn't want to be at the keyboard making up their story. I wanted to be on the road with them in that car heading off around the country. And I would, every, every night as I would sit down to write part of the novel, I would, I would be envious of them. I'd be wish I was with them, and yet they don't exist, you know, except I wanted, I wanted to be having that summer they were having. They became real to me. Here's a pitch foul on a play by Tom Pagnazzi. Yeah, I mean, you were, you were mentioning, Ray, I was, I was curious as I was watching you broadcast here how it's different what you do the first three innings and the last three innings and what you do when you go over to the radio booth. I may, I may watch you do that for a while. Very good. Because you do, you do change it, right? Yeah, I try to. Two balls, two strikes, that don't mean, that does not mean that I lie on radio. No, but you have to change your style, right? <laughs> yeah. Here's the pitch. There's a drive way back. Dwight Smith might be out of here. It is into the basket. Holy cow. Four to nothing in favor of the Cardinals. And the way they have hit that ball in this series either proves that they're just red hot with the bat or it proves how weak the pitching of the Cubs has become because of the various injuries. This looks like a high changeup. Pagnazzi hits his third of the year. He's driven in 10. And this will bring Billy Connors out from the dugout. And Harry, I don't want to cast dispersions on the luck of Bob Green, but everything was sailing right along until yeah. Bob got into Sorry. the booth. <laughs> and now the Cardinals <laughs> seem to pepper the Cub pitching once again. I was That's thinking the same thing, run Steve. they've hit in this series. <laughs> well, boy, it just made the basket, but that ball was really cream, no doubt about it. And once again, the Cubs have to play catch-up. They're behind four to nothing. And that's been the pattern of this whole series. Here's Tewksbury. Pretty good hitting pitcher. Swings, a high pop fly. Yelvin going out. Sosa comes in. And there's two away. Sosa has caught both putouts in this inning. So the two away, four runs in. The Cardinals lead four to nothing. How many times would you say you would rewrite a page of your book as you went along. I worked on it pretty hard because I wanted to get it right because some of the observations I wanted, you know, I mentioned we were down in the clubhouse here and we walked down there and I noticed. Here's Gilkey, the first pitch flying out. Dwight Smith will get it and that will finish the inning. Four runs, four hits, one air and nobody on. Left on. We go in the bottom of the second. Four to nothing in favor of St. Louis. 
Are they high? Yeah. Maybe low. Oh. Heavy rains. Lake effect snow. Tom will tell you. Weather isn't everything. It's the only thing. Tom will tell you. Yeah. But only on Chicago's very own. That's right. Match light charcoal mm. has just mm. the right amount of lighter fluid. Already added. That's why there's only one match for Match Light. Match Light from Kingsford. We're gonna have to bail. What about the Bud Light? No time. There's only one left. You take it. I'll never forget you. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Not so fast. Yes! If you like baseball cards, you'll love Card Baseball, the new baseball board game that brings your cards to life. You'll use the stats from your favorite cards. It's fun, easy to play, and perfect for anyone eight years and up. Available at participating Osco stores. You can always spot a neighborhood with pride. Maybe it's a little cleaner, a little nicer place to be. All because somebody cared enough to make it that way. Like your neighborhood 76 station. Here, every gasoline is specially formulated to keep your engine clean and running smooth. We're rather proud of that. 76, go with the spirit. Harry Carey back at Wrigley Field as we go in the bottom of the second, 4 nothing in favor of the Cardinals. Derek May is leading it off. One ball, one strike. Pagnazzi's two-run homer climax, a four-run inning. As the ground ball sharply hit, Jeffrey's got it. He races over the first, one away. You were talking about... Yeah, I noticed I went down to the Cubs clubhouse and... You know, we lose sight. Most of us who go to work, our employers provide uh, their tools for the job, whether it be ballpoint pens or computer disks or, or uh, you know, uh, notepads. But in the Cubs clubhouse, it's sort of the essential difference between these guys and us. You got three clear canisters of bazooka bubble gum. And in one, you got regular bazooka. and one, you got sugarless bazooka. And the third, you got soft bazooka. And I was sitting there, and I realized if we needed one more reminder of how these guys' lives are different than ours, it's they come to work and their employers pr provide them with bazooka bubble gum. I mean, they're very lucky. <laughs> There's a ground ball. Good by Sosa. The throw to first, he beats it. The ball was knocked down by the third baseman, Todd Zeal. It was really hit hard. They may give him a base hit on it. Well, it's either going to go as a 15th error of the year, a base hit. And this is a pretty tough play for Zeal. Although he does try to backhand the ball, he doesn't have very good balance, and they do give him his 15th error of the year. And Sammy deprived of a base hit. Boy. Well, I don't know. That's a hot smash. The other day, a ball like that skipped over the third baseman's shoulder, and they gave him a, they gave him a hit. Well, I know it's very frustrating for Sammy, but if he loses the batting title by just that one hit, it'll even be more frustrating. <laughs> Here's a pitch. Wilkin fouls the bat. We're, let's watch his play and see what you think. Well, this, the ball is, uh, the play is slowed down, but that ball was really hit hard. So it's an error on Zeal, who already has 14 of them. You know, Harry, it's one thing. That if a guy has a reputation as a great glove man, he's going to get the benefit of the doubt on that. When a guy already has a lot of errors, it just seems easier to give him another one. There goes Sammy, swung and missed the peg. He is out, safe. He had started to call him out, Charlie Williams. And then Ozzy Smith dropped the ball. A stolen base, no errors charged. Although he would have been out if uh, Ozzy Smith held the ball. Sammy's going to be given his ninth stolen base of the year. The throw is right there, and Pagnazzi hasn't lost anything in his three weeks on the disabled list. This is his third game back, See and him? what a thrower he is. See the umpire call him out first? I wonder if the scorers saw that. Now a man's in scoring position. 
And Wilkins with a count of 0 2. A little bit high. One ball, two strikes. Needless to say, it's tough to read an interesting book between pitches. Yeah, I know. It's a, it's a, I know one of the things these guys notice on their trip is they see a play like that one, and they realize the rest of us, it's hard to imagine even making the throw or making the catch. I mean, you're sitting there talking about whether it's an error or a hit. It's, you know, you look at these guys and you look at all the people in the stands and all, all of us who are observing it, all of us who are watching once wanted to be these guys, and these are the guys who made it. And sometimes we lose sight of that, you know, when we're when we're picking apart the hits and errors. I want you to see the book we're talking about, written by Bob Green. Here's Sosa leadoff second. Look out, pickoff play, no throw. Well, Bob, we want to wish you a, a lot of luck. I know it'll be a, a big hit. Well, I have I'm looking to, forward to reading it myself. I have to tell you, you know, I talk about how it's this fantasy summer for for guys our age who try to get back the summer they used to have. But I was thinking, you know, you and Steve and Tom and Ron, you're 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 some of the few people in the world who probably still have that endless summer. And I, I wonder if there are still times when you realize how blessed you are, you know, to to sort of spend your summer in the sun. Well, I'm sure we do uh, because there's no no happier way to make a living than doing baseball. I'm sure all of us would agree to that. But thanks very much for coming up. Well, thanks for having me. And like I say, this is uh, I feel like I'm a kid. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell the people you aren't a kid. How old are you now? Forty five. Forty six. Forty six. But up what here, you? but up here, you got to feel like a kid, right? <laughs> OK, good seeing you, Bob. There's a pitch outside the Ray Sanchez two out a man in scoring position Sanchez hitting 313 already Tewksbury whirls no play Sammy thinking there would be a play dive for the bag. Mike Cook of Bill Cook Buick on hand today on a lovely day in Chicago. One ball, no strikes. Line drive, base hit, a run will score. Well, he fell down. Now they throw the ball in and it's cut off. Sammy Sosa rounding third base, fell down. But he got back to his feet and scored. And now the Cubs trail only by three. RBI number 13 for Ray Sanchez, who continues to pepper the ball. He came in hitting 313. And he says he doesn't view himself as a power hitter. He doesn't like to get down in the count when he's not leading off. He just looks for something out over the plate and tries to hit it hard. And he's finding a lot of holes this year. He is now hitting 317. And for a man who wasn't supposed to get a whole lot of play, he has been most impressive. Here now is Eric Gelding. Fastball is high and inside. You know, one of the fans here today when I came to the ballpark handed me a the Rocky Mountain News out of Denver. And uh, on the front page is a big color photo of Andres Galarraga. There's a drive. Deep left center fairway. Going to be caught near the exit gate to retire the side. Yelding gave that ball a long ride, but out caught by Gilkey. So, one run, one hit, one air, one left. At the end of two, the Cardinals lead four to one. A participating advertiser in Cubs baseball is Montgomery Ward, where things are really changing. This summer offer is brought to you by Pepsi. Empty five ice cold bottles, save the caps, and get 10 bucks off three box footwear and apparel. Just like the big guy wears. Only four more to go. The official forecast for summer, 1993. Light to moderate breezes cooler temperatures and gently falling utility bills. Conditions are expected to persist for the next 20 to 45 years. A 
other than that, everything's quiet. Hunter, the quiet fan. The insurance business can be a hazardous place, an uneasy economy, a jagged stock market, failed real estate, junk bonds. One company protects its policyholders by shunning risky investments, offering solid supplemental insurance coverage, combining prudent judgment with dedicated service. That company is Aflac. Aflac, insuring over 35 million people worldwide. Time Magazine calls it a terrific movie. Robert De Niro. Brazil. Monday night at 11.30 on Channel 9. Harry Carey back at Rigby Field. Here's our Rocky Mountain News, and here's the front page, and that's Andres Galarraga. And here's a fellow who's ready to quit. But now he's the outstanding man in Denver, Colorado, in the Rocky Mountains. He's become a local hero. He's baseball's leading hitter, and a shoe-in as Colorado's first all-star. Two strikes to count. On Ozzie Smith leading off the third. Good to see nice things happen to nice people like Galarraga. Swings and he strikes Ozzie out. And Ozzie doesn't do that very often. He's the toughest man to lead to strike out. Anheuser Busch's aerial ambassador, the Bud One airship, brings you these pictures with the help of pilots Mike Hans. Bill Clark and camera operator George Shaftsma. Now the there's Jeffries, another line drive, and this one's going to the wall. He's around second, racing for third. Here's a relay. He's in there with a triple. He was robbed of a double his first time. He triples his second time. The third triple of the year for Greg Jeffries, who hasn't had a whole lot of difficulty with Cub pitching, as we'll take another look at it. Sammy comes over, tries to cut it off. Doesn't make a particularly good play this time. Actually, he reaches over the ball, but it goes as a three-base hit anyway, and the Cubs are getting spotty outfield play today. One out, one on. We all remember, we all remember the Cub trainer, Tony Garofalo. Well, as some... Jim is here with a group from the Phi Delta Theta fraternity at the University of Wisconsin in Madison. I think that's a fraternity my son Skip belonged to, if I'm not mistaken. Here's the pitch. A little bit outside. And a happy 25th birthday to Cub fan Eva Braverman. Langford, who started a four-run inning in the second with the signals to center. Curved call over the outside corner. Let's pause for station identification. This is WGN-TV Chicago, America's number one sports station. Ray Langford with a count of two balls and a strike. He's fanned eight times in the series. But he got a pitch other than one like that his first time up, and he lined a single to center. If Frank Castillo continues to throw good changeups low and away, Langford is not going to hurt him. The reason why he singled the first time up was he got a fastball out over the plate on the first pitch. And he was looking for it. So let's see if Langford remains outmatched with the changeup. He fouls it back. Cub fans, get your free copy of the 1993 Chicago Cubs gift catalog by calling toll-free 1-800-745-CUBS. The Cubs gift catalog offers hundreds of unique and exciting gifts for your favorite Cubs fan. Call and order your Cubs gift catalog today at 1-800-745-CUBS. Two balls, two strikes. Ooh, just missed the strike zone. Ball three. Oh, hey, 
Frank Bully is angry because Frank Castillo showed his displeasure at the pitch. My guys, what's this game coming to? Pretty decent pitch as Jim LaFever comes out. He wants to make sure that his pitcher stays in the game. Well, you, you ne next time he hollers at me, he's history. And maybe on a hot oh, day, oh tempers boy. are a little short here well, on Wrigley Field. It's too early in the day to have them that short. <laughs> I mean, how in the world? Here's a pitcher was disappointed a pitch he threw wasn't called a strike. And the umpire is very angry about it. The infield's still in. Three balls, two strikes on Langford. Castillo ready. Round ball to Sharp. Boy, Langford's a dumb guy. Why wouldn't he have taken that pitch? Do you know that you know Frank Bully would have called it a ball he was down, right down the middle of the plate. He's so angry at Castillo. This was probably high and away. Looked outside well off the plate. And if Langford just doesn't swing, he's at first base. As it is, the Cubs will take it. As with the infield in, the run doesn't score. Well, how many fathers have managed his sons of the majors? That's a good question on the AFLAC trivia question. I don't know what I'm going to guess. <laughs> Here's uh, the Ariel gets none of the above. <laughs> I'll guess four. I know that Hal McRae and Brian McRae and the Ripkins. Yeah, the Ripkins, of course. The Alouz, Felipe and Moises. That's three, and there's got to be another one in there somewhere. Two balls, no strikes, way outside. Yogi ever managed Dale? I don't think so. I don't think he did. I wonder if Connie Mack had a son. I think he had a son who became a, a general manager after he passed away. Bouncing ball up the middle. A base hit. Marv Witten drives in. The fifth run of the day for the Cardinal. Well, I'd like to make a little suggestion to Billy Connors. He probably won't be listening to this until later. This infield grass was cut down considerably because the Cubs had a very good infield and the pitching staff looked very solid early in the year. Now the Wrigley Field infield, unlike past years, is very fast. Might be a good idea with the pitching staff decimated the way it is to get that high grass back in the infield again and stop some of the drives from going through because if it's a hot summer and that wind continually blows out and you can't get any ground balls at the hitter infielders too often, the ERAs are going to be in epic proportions. Pitch outside. Artie Greco Cerisos is putting together quite a benefit show tomorrow night at the Drury Lane in Oak Brook Terrace for the benefit of the Campbell Lodge Boys Home, multiple sclerosis, and the Italian American War Veterans Post Number Two. Snap throw to first. And boy, the talent, Keeley Smith, Freddie Bell, Freddie Bell and the Bell Boys, and the one and only Sonny King, who opened so many shows for Jimmy Durante. Jimmy Damon will be the MC, and Esther Hanna will be the pianist. All that tomorrow night for a good cause. With Artie Greco putting all the show together. The donation is $100 per person, $80 per person, or $60 per person. Tom Zeal in the hole now with two strikes, but he also has two balls, and the count is evened up. The rooftop people are enjoying themselves. We can smell the barbecue way out here. 
Two balls, two strikes. Line drive. Center field. Base hit. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. They, 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 if they don't... Well, it was Castillo that they thought other clubs were reading the pitches, primarily the New York Mets. But I think these, the way the Cardinals are hitting nothing but line drives, they're not that good a hitting ball club in the averages. Well, look at the location. If, Arnie, if you show that curveball again, you'll see it's up and out over the plate. And I don't care if a team is hitting or not. Major League hitters hit these pitches. Watch the curveball. It just comes up there spinning. It's a little too high and doesn't break very well. And you know, those turn into line drives. You know, Steve, in my own awkward way, that's what I was trying to say. Either they're out hitting ball club or our <laughs> pitch is not very good. Well, our pitching hasn't been very good in a while. As you look at Chuck McElroy, he's healthy again, minus the thermal underwear. Here now is Geronimo Pena. That's a high fly ball in the center field. To retire the side with one run, three hits, no errors, two men left. And we go in the bottom of third, five to one St. Louis. I don't need some fancy cologne to tell me I'm a man. I use Skin Bracer, it smells great. But it also cools and tones my skin. Confidence is very sexy, don't you think? Skin Bracer Aftershave. By Menon. Hmm. What? Oh, guard lock. Oh, very scary. Wow. Finally, the good stuff. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Trouble with heartburn? Well, you could change your job. Change your lifestyle. Change your diet. A bon appetit. Or better still, reach for Rolaids. It absorbs acid fast to bring 100% relief to millions. So maybe you can't change your life, but you can get relief in original and calcium rich. Rolaids spells relief. Matchlight charcoal has just the right amount of lighter fluid already added. That's why there's only one match for Matchlight. Matchlight from Kingsford. Time magazine calls it a terrific movie. Robert De Niro. Brazil. Monday night at 11.30 on Channel 9. A brave reporter, a political murder, a deadly cover-up. Andy Garcia, Amy Irving, and Robert Duvall, a show of force. Tonight at 11.30 on Channel 9. Harry Carey with Steve Stone and Tom Brenneman as we go in the bottom of the third. First pitch is in there, a strike call. The Cubs have had one hit. The Cardinals have had seven. Ringing line drive. Pitch outside, one ball, one strike. Dukesbury had a bad arm when he was a member of the Cubs and really didn't fare very well over here. But he's quite a pitcher now. Castillo. He's made himself a much better hitter of late. As witness the fact, he's had five hits. He strikes out this time, though. Cub fans. Entertain your friends or clients in the best seats in the house. Rent a Cubs mezzanine skybox at Wrigley Field. Plenty of dates are available for the rest of the season. So for more information, call 312-404-4068. Bob Tewksbury is a living example of the fact that you don't have to be overpowering to pitch in the major league successfully. But you do have to have good control. And he's got four pitches. He gets them all over the plate and can throw any of them in any situation. There's a high fly ball from the big cob in left center. And it is by Gilkey. Two out. Back to our Budweiser blimp. They're having a lot of fun.
Galarraga still leads the league in hitting with a 434 average. Barry Bonds is next, 367. This Gaino batting now is hitting 349. He's fifth in the league. Grace is seventh at 328. Here's your AFLAC trivia question answer. Oh, I, it was you. Son Earl, yeah. Well, I got four of them. I thought, but Earl and Connie. There you go, Harry. Sure, I remember that. <laughs> I wasn't sure Yogi Berra managed his son Dale. Of course, Ripken and McGray and Alou. Here's a pitch outside. Two balls, two strikes. The story of Andres Galarraga really started here with St. Louis because he was with the Cardinals last year and Don Baylor was the hitting coach. And he yeah. noticed second half of the year that Andres seemed to have his stroke back again and convinced the boys in Colorado to take a chance on him. There's a bouncing ball. Nice play by Jeffries, but he drops the ball as he stumbled and fell. They call out a base hit for Vizcaino. And he's on with two out, and here's my Mark Grace. This ball flattens out on Jeffries. You see, he expects the big hop, then it takes a little hop, and actually, he had it. The ball dropped out of the glove, but Jose winds up with a base hit. That was a good effort by Jeffries, who has really put together a sound year at first base with only two airs. And now the Cubs have a chance to cut into the lead with the wind blowing out at 17 miles an hour out of the southwest. Mark Grace. Bounced out his first time up. There's a drive in the left center field. Way back, way back. It might up for the wall. Here's a runner around third. He'll score. Graves pulls up in second. And he is just driven in. His 56th run of the 52nd run of the RBI. This one hit very well, not quite well enough to get out, but well enough for Mark Grace to drive home a run and cut into that lead. Bounces off the ivy, and when it bounces away, Jose scores easily. And so the play that was not made at first base gets the Cubs a run in what's shaping up once again as one of those slugfest extravaganzas at Wrigley Field. Now the pitch to Derek May. Line foul. You know, something nice happened to me this being Father's Day. ESPN did a nice thing. They hooked up on a conference call. My son Skip in Atlanta and his son, who's my grandson, Chip, and uh, had us all talk on this Father's Day. And it saved me a phone call. So I saved a little money on this Sabbath day already. Two strikes and nothing. Five to two now in favor of the Cardinals. Derek May. Hot shot foul. Let me ask you something. Between this Caino's hit and Sammy Sosa's ball, on which it was ruled an error, what's the difference? Difference that one guy has two errors this year, the other guy has 14, and it's the official scores judgment. Here's a pitch a little bit low. As long as you have something that is subjective, Harry, and official scorekeeping is subjective, there's very little criteria as to what is a hit and what is an error. Officially, it says if it can be handled with major league ability, then it should be an error. Swung and he struck him out, and that ends the inning. But the Cubs get a run. One run, two hits. One man left. Tom will be along in a moment. I'll be heading for the radio booth with Ron Santo. Harry Carey at the end of three innings with the Cardinals leading the Cubs five to two. 
The laboratories of 2001 announce a major breakthrough in auto protectant technology, Formula 2001 Super Protectant. Its advanced sunstop formula helps protect against the sun's UV rays, extreme temperatures, and moisture, which cause fading, drying, and cracking. What's more, independent lab tests prove Formula 2001 provides a more brilliant, longer-lasting shine than Armorall on vinyl and leather. But what if your car surfaces are already faded? We went to the Arizona desert to put Formula 2001 Super Protectant to the ultimate test. Watch what happens to UV faded vinyl, rubber, even dried faded leather. Get the new standard in automotive protectant technology, the one with 50% more active shining ingredients than Armor All. Formula 2001 Super Protectant with a fresh leather fragrance. And for the unique demands of tire care, get new Formula 2001 Tire Foam and Shine. Just spray and walk away. Get 2001 at these fine stores. Chris Everett special, celebrity interviews from a celebrity's point of view. Tonight at 10.30 on Channel 9. A brave reporter, a political murder, a deadly cover-up. Andy Garcia, Amy Irving, and Robert Duvall, a show of force. Tonight at 11.30 on Channel 9. Hi again, everybody. Back with our producer, director, Arnie Harris and Steve Stone. I'm Tom Brenneman at Wrigley Field in Chicago. The series finale here today. And the Redbirds have jumped on Frank Castillo for five runs on seven base hits. When the wind is blowing out here, even good pitchers have trouble. But if you're struggling at all, it makes it worse, Tommy Boy. And this looks like another extravaganza. Well, it's been like that all weekend long here at Wrigley Field. Lots of base hits, lots of runs. And already the two teams have combined for seven runs and 10 hits in the first three innings. Bagnazzi had a lot to do with that four run second inning. He accounted for half of them with a two run home run to the deepest part of right center field just to the right of the 400 mark. I'd like to pass along happy Father's Day greetings to a father of a friend of mine Sid Stern and that's his father Harry Stern. One and two to Tom Pagnazzi, and he's out of there on strikes. Good change up that time by Castillo. Recording his second strike out of the afternoon. We'll take a look at the good slow curveball. Pagnazzi swings through it, and Frank Castillo records the strikeout for only the fourth time Pagnazzi struck out all year. Tewksbury lifting one down the right field line. The wind keeping it fair, and Sosa's there for out number two. We'd like to pass along birthday greetings all the way to Cancun, Mexico, to Eric and Linky. You can't beat a good Linky. Got that right. International flair here today, going down to Cancun. Wouldn't be a bad place to hang out for a couple of days. There you see from the Budweiser blip. Beautiful Wrigley Field, another capacity crowd on hand for this the finale of the homestand and obviously to this four game series. Cardinals have won two of the first three. They lead 5 2 here in the fourth inning with two down and nobody on base. Bernard Gilkey is 0 for 2. He's bounced to third and fly to center. You don't want to go inside on Bernard Gilkey. It's tough to get in there, and he's pretty much looking in there. So when you go get him, it should be something out away from him. Two and one to Gilkey Castillo going to work. And he pulled him right there with an off-speed pitch. Two balls, two strikes. Kept the straight change away from Gilkey and down that time. Let's take a look at Gilkey. The first part of his career and the second part of his career. And he came inside and he ripped it into left field, a base hit. 
The Cubs continue to come inside on Gilkey the entire series, and all he has done is collect base hits in the left field. Well, let's watch it again. And if we had a chart on where Gilkey gets his base hits, and this is a hanging curveball, you would find that all of them are to left field. Except his home runs, which are to deep left field. Well, he had a double to left yesterday. A double and a home run to left field on Friday. And in the series opener, a home run and a double also to left field. You can't walk to left field. He had two <laughs> of those in the opener. He's really becoming quite a hitter. And Frank has done something that very few guys have done this year, getting Ozzie Smith and Pagnazzi to strike out in the same game. Ozzie's the toughest in the major leagues to fan. Yeah, got him swinging in the third inning after he flied to left his first time up. Two balls and no strikes. Bullpen up and going once again for the Cubs. And once again, it's Chuck McElroy. And it's good to see Chuck back and throwing. He said he was still pretty tired. He said his arm felt all right, but... Yeah, I mean, when you suffer from what they thought was a heat stroke in a series opener on Thursday, it takes you a couple of days to get that strength back. That one hammered foul. It goes to two and one on Ozzy. I would be careful now with the change up to Ozzy Smith. Now, he knows that Castillo struck him out on a change up in the third inning. And I think I would wait perhaps for another at bat before I went back to it here. Gilkey can really run over at first base and the pitch. He tried to lay one down and fouled it off. Cubs. Well, we were talking about Bernard Gilkey a few moments ago, and now well, there you see it. Well, that's where he hits, but that's where he hits everything. And that doesn't show just his base hits. Now, usually the 34% to right field, those are sliders away where he'll just lift them harmlessly that way. So that's kind of a deceiving graphic, although it shows you that he just does spread the ball around. Well, Ozzie had asked for timeout. Gilkey was off with a pitch. They're going to tell Bernard to turn around and come on back. Cardinals have won eight of their last ten games. The Cubs have split their last ten, five and five, and the Cubs find themselves... 14 games out of first place. Philadelphia leads St. Louis by nine and a half. And Philadelphia will go to St. Louis in a little over a week and play a big four-game series against the Cardinals. Runner goes, and it's popped up. Short left field, Sanchez going out, and he has it, which ends the inning. One hit, one left. Middle of the fourth at Wrigley Field, and the Cardinals lead the Cubs five to two. He's back. It's the MTV Movie Awards. Ninja in black tie, too hot to handle. He takes the chances. No other man wins, of course. He's the MTV Movie Awards. Girls, treachery, and love. Hosted by Eddie Murphy. The exotic and tantalizing MTV Movie Awards. Wednesday night at 7 on Channel 9. I've given thousands, given thousands of autographs, but the most important one is on my donor card. To become a tissue donor, call 1-800-767-1200. A twin blade from Bic? What's in it for me? I'm a Bic man! Bic man! It's different. A twin for normal skin and a twin for sensitive, right? I'm a Bic man! I'm a sensitive guy, right? So I tried it. Bic man! It's good. It was great. I'm a big the Big Twin Select. Normal, sensitive. It really blew me away. It made a big man out of me. I'm that big man. I'm Bud Light, please. Tonight's Ladies' Night, and there's a special on Bud Light. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Oh, no, it's Ted from accounting. Time Magazine calls it a terrific movie. Robert De Niro. Ah! Brazil. Monday night at 11.30 on Channel 9. Well, we're back here at Wrigley Field in Chicago where it is a 5-2 ball game with the Cardinals in front of the Cubs. Sammy Sosa to lead things off. 
for Jim Lefevre's team. And Tewksbury missing ball one. Sosa 0 for 1 today. Reached on an error, stole a base, scored a Cub run in the second inning. Going to be visiting in a moment with a very special guest, Chicago native and Duke University head coach Mike Krzyzewski. Earlier today, though, our grand prize winner from the Father's Day contest sponsored by CarX. The winner was Krista Aguilar. Her father, Marcelo, threw out the first pitch today. And what a gift from Krista to her father, Marcelo, on this Father's Day out of Bedford Park, Illinois. Sammy Sosa taking a pitch high, and welcome, Mike Krzyzewski, and welcome back home, pal. Thank you very much. Actually, the reason I came up was to find out the real story behind your jaw. Uh, uh -oh. What happened? And Steve Stone said it wasn't uh, you falling down, and I'm, I, are you going to expose what really happened? Or? Now, I'm very surprised that you would do that to me, Mike. All the tough questions you get asked, and you and him <laughs> set me up. That's not fair. Well, then someone told me to ask him if uh, how one great year can carry you so far. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's all you need is one great year. Here's a great one right now. And at the wall, goodbye. Sosa, the home run. And for Sammy, that's his team leading 13th of the year. We're going to bring you up here more often if this was what happened. Well, my daughter Jamie is with me. It's her first Cub game, and I think her favorite or one of her favorites is Sammy Sosa. She keeps popping pictures, so she's really excited right now that he hit that one. But you guys do a great job. All the Cub fans in North Carolina, we enjoy, uh, you know, your announcing. But Steve does, a, I think, as good a job in baseball as far as analyzing. I, I'm not sure how he can predict what pitch is going to come all the time, but he's, if my coaches could predict plays as well as he could predict pitches, uh, would he would win even more? <laughs> well, Mike, it's always a pleasure to have you up here. It's nice to finally meet you. And I was telling Tommy and you also that I think you are a credit to the college basketball game. And it's just nice to see a program run like yours is run to have all the success that you guys have had over the last few years. Well, thanks, Steve. I, I'm hoping that uh, we're continuing to get some success and the Cubs will go along with us. I've been a Cub fan my whole life. I used to come here when I was a youngster with my buddies, my Colombo buddies, and uh, I think they have a team now that can do it if they get healthy. Well, we're hoping that that's yeah. the case. Yeah. But if you've been a Cub fan for a long time, then you also have had the kind of frustration that we've had for so many years and hoping one time that we'll see a lot more of this. A home run by Sammy Sosa, his 13th of the year, his 36th driven in. Montgomery Ward donates $100 to Cubs Care, and the Cubs cut into the Cardinal lead. Well, Coach K, the best of luck down the road. Thanks so much for taking the time to come up, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks, and uh, we're going to pull this one out. All right, that's a deal. The best of you and your lovely daughter, Jamie, up here today, and have fun at the ballpark. So the home run by Sammy Sosa has made it a 5-3 ball game, and Ray Sanchez settles in and takes ball one up and in. Sanchez, an RBI single his first time up. This time, the one hopper to Zeal. And there are two men out. Tewksbury does not give up home runs often. That's only the sixth he's given up in now 87 innings of work. And there you look at the beautiful lake shore of Chicago from the Budweiser blimp. Just a gorgeous day here. And that shows you just how pretty this city really is. Here's Eric Yelding. Yelding fly to left field with a man aboard ending the Cubs second inning. So Sosa the home run to begin the inning. Wilkins bounces to Tewksbury. Sanchez the grounder to Zeal. And as Yelding fouls off that pitch account goes to one and one. We were talking about the showdown in another week between the Cardinals and the Phillies big four game series and today Philadelphia trailing the Florida Marlins at the end of six it's two to one there you go Stoney right out here off the lake Ozzie can't get it and that'll be an infield hit for Eric Yeldon You see Ozzy trying to get in position to make this throw, and they're giving Ozzy an air on this. And this is pretty hard to believe. 
Ozzie in the hole tries to make this play. It's going to be a difficult play with Yelding going down the line. And I think Eric Yelding also looking up at the official scorekeeper, Bob Rosenberg, known affectionately as Santa Claus, but not today as Ozzie Smith also a little bewildered. And now it's going to be a base hit. A little lobbying going on, and fans here appreciate it. Yeah, it'll be a base hit, but Castillo dribbles one, and he's out at first base, which ends the inning. One run, two hits, and one man left. We go to the fifth, 5-3, Cardinals in front. A participating advertiser in Cubs baseball is Buick and your local Buick dealers. Remember Buick, the new symbol for quality in America. If you were to build what is perhaps the finest station wagon in the world, you'd make it luxurious, safe, and comfortable. Like the 1993 Buick Roadmaster Estate Wagon, you'd give it a V8 engine and driver airbag. Like Roadmaster, make it spacious enough for big surprises. Roadmaster Estate Wagon. Isn't it good to know that Buick still knows how to build a luxury wagon? Chicken, I got the best steaks, I got the cheap charcoal, and I got burned. Fire's out. Totally. When do we eat? Sorry. Still out. So don't get burned by cheap charcoal. By the best. Kingsford charcoal. Bites faster, cooks longer. Kingsford. The sure fight. We've changed our miles. We've changed our styles. We changed our lives, we changed our signs, we changed his plays, and we changed our ways. Yeah, things are changing, and Montgomery Ward. Things are changing, and Montgomery Ward. With help from CARE, millions of people around the world are building better lives every day. Help make a world of difference. Care. Pick up our U.S. Open coverage here on the fourth hole. Curtis Strange with about 195 yards on the approach to the green. And really is not a bad shot. It's great coverage. Uh, that looks a lot like Baldus Rawl. <laughs> I've, I've played Baldus Rawl. It's absolutely that easy. No, no sand traps in front of the greens. A lot of nice, easy grass to roll it up there. And... Some good brown spots on the greens. Very similar. Greg Jeffries leading it off his team in front at the end of four by a count of five to three. One and one to Jeffries who has tripled and scored in line to left. Jeffries four hits yesterday and you see the batting average with the hit today that's updated at 318. There's a little bird around home plate that's taking in the contest. Now see that bird couldn't get a seat for the game today. Well it's very crowded on Father's Day. And now he's going to go have a seat right in front of Jose Vizcaino. That's probably the best view in the entire park. Especially if there's a bunt third base way. Well the little fella might be hurt. Vizcaino how about that. Good thing Ozzy Osbourne's not playing third oh, today. Stop it. <laughs> They're going to go make sure that little fellow's all right. Well, I'm glad I'm not eating in the cafeteria here tomorrow. I cannot believe it. <laughs> now we're going to hear from all the animal rights people. Or we could have a name the bird contest. No, 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 no. We can't do that. Can't do that. No, no, no. Can't do that. Deep to right field. If it's fair, it's gone. And it hooks. Foul. Just missed by Greg Jeffries, who's had quite a series. He is right on everything.
The birds are indeed in town. And the Cardinals are very happy about the start of this particular ball game, trying to take three out of four from the Cubs. And the Cubs trying to even the series at two. And Jeffries has killed the Cubs over the course of his career, whether he's wearing a Met uniform or a Cardinal uniform. Hammers it again down the right field line and again hooks it foul. Boy, he hit everything hard even yesterday. I would think a changeup would be in order because there is no doubt that he is right on the fastball of Frank Castillo. So let's see if Rick Wilkins decides to throw him the change, and if he does, can he keep it low and away? Two and two to Greg Jeffries. And he took something off that one, a 68 mile an hour change up and missed outside. This is very reminiscent of the at bat that Jeffries had in the seventh inning yesterday against Austin Mocker. He hit a home run, a uh, would be home run foul, and hammered another pitch down there and finally got a single. And he'll do it again. This time down the left field line, May over to cut it off. And Jeffries going to try for two. Here comes the throw. He made it. Well, there's one thing you can never take away from Greg Jeffries. Even going back to his days in New York, he plays as hard as anybody in the National League. What I liked about this at bat, Tom, was that he thought double as soon as the ball left the bat. He wasn't taking anything for granted. And the Cardinals all series have run on Derek May. Derek May does everything he can, but Jeffries just accelerates to the bag and makes it easily. And that's his ninth double of the year. And Frank Castillo so far does not have an answer for Greg Jeffries because he's hit everything he's thrown. Cardinals already with nine base hits against Frank Castillo. And Jeffries just the first batter up here in the fifth inning. And for the third time today, McElroy gets loose in the bullpen. You think he's loose? I think he's real loose. If he gets any looser, he's going to fall apart. So either bring him in or sit him down. Strike one to Ray Langford. Well, what got into you last night? This is Father's Day, and my dad probably looking on in Cleveland, Ohio, enjoying his day with the family. Back to the mound. The runner will not advance. And Langford thrown out at first base. And I'd like to send out Happy Father's Day. I'm fortunate enough to have a couple of fathers, both of them back in Cincinnati. And I hope they're enjoying their days. Had a chance to talk to each of them this morning. Did you call your father this morning? I called my father yesterday. He said he would be out this afternoon, but I would have a chance to get in touch with him later this evening. All good. He's and a good man. He's very gracious about accepting those collect calls. <laughs> Foul. <off. laughs> and I bet you pulled that on him. <laughs> I don't have any doubt about it. You and Arnie, I tell you, you two together, generally, nothing but trouble. Outfield, playing Witten to pull and very deep. This is a strong young man. And that time, Frank Castillo lost sight of Ray Sanchez at shortstop. When he delivered the ball, Sanchez was standing on second base and Jeffries pushing him out of there saying look you're not going to pick me up so get out of here. But well, Frank Castillo has got to keep an eye on Sanchez. He cannot throw the ball while Sanchez is out of position. Well Frank made a mistake on Witten the last time up. He went three and zero oh on him and you knew Witten was going to have the green light and he gave him something to hit and sure enough Witten just ripped it right back up the middle with a right handed batting Todd Zeal on deck. Jeffries, a Cardinal team leader in stolen bases. Three and one. Well, Frank's gotten into a situation now where he's not hitting with the curveball that he was hitting with early in the game. So he's leaving him high and outside to the left hand hitters, and then you've got to come into them, and this is a dangerous pitch. I wouldn't give in to Witten here. I'd keep the ball away from him. If you walk him, you walk him. You got first base open. Three balls and a strike. And he swings and misses on what probably would have been ball four. Well, that was a changeup, however. He didn't throw the fastball. It was out of the zone, and Witten, a little too anxious, should have been standing on first base because this one is high and away, well out of the zone. 
Cardinals leading 5-2 with one down and Jeffries at second base here in the fifth inning. And the payoff pitch Castillo to Witten. Struck him out with a changeup again. Third strikeout today by the Cub right-hander. This was a real good pitch and you can see Witten just completely fooled. Now neither of the last two pitches were strikes. And if Wooden had any patience at all, he'd be on first base. However, he doesn't, and the Cubs have two outs in the inning. Zeal a couple of hits today, singled and scored in the first, single to left center, was stranded at first in the third. Zeal with 28 runs batted in this season, and he takes a pitch above the belt for a ball. McElroy just standing hands on hips down in the Cub bullpen. He is loose. Tony Muser, the bullpen coach, standing there next to him. Now Jimmy Lefevre having his team ready to embark on a 15-day, 13-game, four-city road trip. Joe Torrey's club moves from here down to Florida to take on the Marlins. Two and one out of Todd Zeal. This is the beginning of a 10 road, 10 game road trip for St. Louis. They play Florida, then New York, and then home against Philadelphia for four. Three and one to Todd Zeal. Pena waiting on deck. Bob Tewksbury has allowed three runs today on five hits. One of the runs, the first Cub run in the second inning was unearned. There you see Hall of Famer Red Shandink sitting next to Tewksbury. <laughs> he never gets any older. Still in uniform year after year after year. Red is pretty much the Oshkawano of the St. Louis Cardinals. As long as Red wants to be around, he will be around after what he's done for this organization. By the way, one of the most successful managers in the history of the Cardinals. And there's ball four to Zeal. Pena getting a chance to play today despite the fact that his strongest side is his right side. But yesterday he had no problems hitting from the left side hitting a home run and two doubles and he's got a base hit and a run batted in here early in this one. So maybe that left handed stroke is coming back to him. Two aboard Jeffries a lead off double two outs later zeal drawing the walk he's standing at first. Pena has doubled in a run scored a run and fly to center and he dumps one to short left Derek May coming in can't get it. Jeffries will score. Zeal on to second. Pena knocks in a second run of the day. Good effort by Derek May, but he couldn't get it, and the Cardinals are in front six to three. We've seen this happen to Derek a lot, where he does the flat out dive, has the ball just briefly, and then sees it bounce out of the glove. But he does get the E for effort. And Pena gets the RBI for his effort. Here's Tom Pagnazzi, a two-run home run to the deepest part of right center field in the second inning with Pena aboard. And then Castillo struck him out leading off the fourth. Pena, given the chance here the last couple of days, as you mentioned, Stoney, to play against a right-hander, and he's made Joe Torre look like a genius. There's strike two. Pena yesterday, three hits. All left-handed, his only out came right-handed with a home run and an RBI. And today, two out of three with two runs batted in. Two on, two out. 0 oh and 2 to Pagnazzi. Boy, just when you think Castillo has turned the corner. With a very impressive outing here at Wrigley Field during his homestand, seven and a third innings, five hits, no runs against the Marlins, and a three nothing win today has been roughed up again. Gets away from Wilkins, and both runners will advance. 
Zeal to third, Pena to second on the wild pitch by Frank Castillo. Well, now you have to put Pagnazzi on, don't you, with Tewksbury on deck? I would assume they're going to do that as you see the ball in the dirt, bouncing away from Wilkins. 2 2 count. I wouldn't take a chance on him, even with two strikes. But Jim LaFever is going to go at him and hopefully will not pay the price for this. Down the right field line. Sosa racing back. Shy of the track makes a grab to end the inning. St. Louis another run. Two hits. Two men left on base. Middle of the fifth. Six three Redbirds. Come on. Let's get a cold one. Our total attendance for today's game. Oh, would you look at this beer line? I'm going to go back. What? Foul ball? No. No. I'm not... If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down... Make it two Bud Lights, please. Make it a Bud Light. Hey, you got another ball? Thank you. To all of you attracted by Buick's reputation for quality, but who think a new Buick is beyond your means, may I make the following suggestion? Go see the new Buick Skylark Custom. It is every bit a quality Buick. And as the most affordable Buick for 1993, it makes Buick quality more attractive than ever. In this throwaway, disposable world, it's nice to find things that last. Relationships, neighborhoods, and the businesses in them. Like your neighborhood 76 station. For years, folks have relied on 76 for quality gasolines to help keep their engines clean and running smooth. Nothing lasts forever, but we think a long, long time would be nice. 76, go with the spirit. The Chris Everett Special, celebrity interviews from a celebrity's point of view. Tonight at 10.30 on Channel 9. A brave reporter, a political murder, a deadly cover-up. Andy Garcia, Amy Irving, and Robert Duvall, a show of force. Tonight at 1130 on Channel 9. All right, so you couldn't get a ticket for the ball game. You're not out playing golf. Now, this would be my idea of a good time if I couldn't do either one of those. A little jet ski action here today in Chicago? Not a bad idea. A good day to be on the lake. Of course, Arnie's always been known as the old man of the sea. Good jet skier. He was one of the best when he was young. <laughs> That's, of course, when they had the swimming horses and he would be pulled <laughs> along behind them. Because there were no motors then. No. They had not yet invented the wheel, in fact. One and two to Dwight Smith. 6-3, the Cardinals in front of the Cubs here in the last of the fifth inning. And it's by Pena in the right field, a base hit. First of the game for Dwight Smith, sixth against the Cardinal right-hander. Dwight got that one off the end of the bat, probably cracked his bat, but picked up the base hit. He swung at a low curveball and drove it through the infield. We'll watch the swing as Dwight goes down and gets this curveball out of the strike zone. But picks up a base hit anyway. And there's Jeffries talking it over with Dwight. And the Cubs have got a shot to cut into that lead because they've got now the heart of the order due up. Four straight left-handers against Tewksbury. Ball one. This is Caino, an infield single in the third inning, scored on Grace's two-out double off the Ivy and left center. Happy birthday greetings to Alex Jasinski and Mark Purcell. Well, Tom, a lot of people felt that San Francisco would fade, that the June swoon that usually hits the San Francisco Giants around this time of year would capture them once again. But they didn't count on Barry Bonds and a resurgent pitching staff. There goes a runner and a ground ball. Pena, nice pickup. And he throws out Vizcaino with Smitty advancing on to second base. You were saying about the Giants. 
Well, they won their last four games in a row, eight of their last ten, and have a seven-and-a-half game lead over everyone's choice to win the West, Atlanta. And Atlanta still is not hitting the baseball particularly well. And the Giants have a lot of breathing room. No let up in sight as far as that offense is concerned. And if the pitching staff stays together, Dusty Baker is a legitimate candidate for manager of the year. Sure. Tell you the one guy nobody's talked much about in that giant starting rotation. We know about Swift and Burke at each nine game winners, but all of a sudden Bud Black. Burke had going to 10 now, pardon me, and Billy Swift will go for number 10, but Buddy Black is really starting to come around. He's having a good season. Race with a 52 runs batted in. He's on a pace to knock in 126. He'll be out here. Jeffries to Tewksbury with Smith going to third and two away in the inning. Usually, you don't figure Bob Tewksbury is going to strike out too many guys. He's fanned three today, and that's right around what he does all the time. And let's look at the fewest strikeouts for nine innings. Greg Hibbard at the top. Bob Tewksbury second. The aforementioned Billy Swift doing it without the strikeout pitch. Those guys good pitchers because they don't walk a lot of people. One hopper to Ozzy, weakly hit by Derek May. The Cubs a leadoff single, and he's stranded at third. We head for the six. Cardinals have doubled up the Cubs. So you can't look at, you know, Beverly Hills Cop or Roy and go, oh, that's Eddie Murphy. All you know about me is what I showed you, you know. Sometimes I, I go to the grocery store and I read stuff in these newspapers and I go, what? Where did they get this from? This is ridiculous. I don't believe in love at first sight. I believe in lust at first sight. <laughs> exactly. The Chris Everett Special. Celebrity interviews from a celebrity's point of view. Tonight at 10.30 on Channel 9. To celebrate Buick's 90th anniversary, we proudly introduce the 90th anniversary Le Saber. Le Saber has a proven reputation for quality and the highest pre-sale value in its class. Now you get all this Buick quality, comfort, and elegance at a special anniversary price. The 90th anniversary Buick Le Saber. Quality its competition just can't hold a candle to. My customers look to me, to true value, for something they can't get in those big warehouse stores. They know I'll take time to answer their questions, and I've got the right products. Real true values. Like this Ross Heavy Duty Root Feeder. It delivers food and water directly to the roots, and it's just 1988. And Gilbert and Bennett Cedar Lawn Edging. It's a beautiful protective border, and the 6 inch by 10 foot roll is just $3.99. You know, the name says it all. True value. Time Magazine calls it a terrific movie. Robert De Niro. Ah! Brazil. Monday night at 11.30 on Channel 9. I've given thousands of autographs, but the most important one is on my donor card. To become a tissue donor, call 1-800-767-1200. 6 3 ball game. No, not there at the volleyball net. But here at Wrigley Field in Chicago, that shot thanks to our folks from Budweiser, the blimp here at the ballpark again today. And a new pitcher now on for Jim Lefevre taking over for Frank Castillo is Chuck McElroy. Chuck McElroy at 2-2, two two, a high ERA of 5.27 on for the 24th time. And Chuck said he wasn't worried about his record, his ERA, or anything else the other day. He was worried about making it through that experience he had in the dugout. And he was one happy man after informing his family that he was going to be okay. Well, but he's come in to face Tewksbury and gone three and zero. Oh. And none have been close. Three zero delivery, and that one not close either. Four straight pitches by McElroy, and he issues a walk to the opposing pitcher. Not a good way to get started. And Jimmy Lefevre feeling the same way. He's looking over his lineup card. In the games the Cubs have won, Jim Lefevre has followed a similar script. It'll either go Scanlon, Ossenmacher, Myers, or Ossenmacher, Scanlon, and Myers. 
And that's been the formula for success. The question is, can you stay close enough to use those three relievers? And the, most of the time, the answer has been no. Bernard Gilkey, one of three today. Tewsbury being held on by Mark Grace. Vizcaino, a step in front of the bag at third. And it's downstairs, one and one to Gilkey. We're on the road beginning tomorrow afternoon. And as always, we invite you to tune in. As you see, please act the left-hander. Bullinger, the right-hander, getting warmed up in the bullpen. Tomorrow's opener in Pittsburgh, Batista against left-hander Zane Smith. Smith has been injured the better part of a year and a half. We'll get underway at 2 o'clock Central Time. A businessman special, Three Rivers Stadium. And yeah, they'll have about 8,000 on tap for that one. But they'll be a highly vocal crowd. How <laughs> out of play. The Pirates, not doing too bad, have taken advantage of the Mets and their sorry ball club this year by beating them three games in a row. And the Mets under Dallas Green, very similar to the Mets under Jeff Torborg. 7 and 21 now. Under Dallas Green, I believe that's right. Three balls, two strikes to Gilkey. Well, it does point up the one thing, Tom. It really doesn't matter in many instances who's managing your ball club. If you have a bad team, you're just going to get beaten by everybody in the league. Mm -hmm. And I don't care if you bring back Casey Stengel to manage him. Back up through the middle. This will be an easy two. Sanchez to Grace. Two down, the bases wiped clean. This is an easy 6-3 double play, and Chuck McElroy very happy about this as Sanchez does it himself. Ben Carrex donates $100 to Cubs Care for that double play. Business not too good this afternoon, but wait till the game ends. You better believe it. Have a pocket full of loot. How about that? The Sammy Sosa hairdo has caught fire here in Chicago. Boy, that's a bad-looking haircut. He's becoming a Sosa maniac. You would look very handsome, and I think that you ought to have Sammy do to your do what somebody else has done to his. That ball drilled into left field. Derek May on the run. He cannot get it. Ozzie Smith into second base with a stand-up two-out double. Derek May is having a tough time today and he's walking around gingerly in the outfield between the dives in front of him and smoking himself into the wall in back of him. It has not been a comfortable afternoon. Ozzie has some pop in the bat. 23 of his 25 home runs have come from the right side and this ball over his head and watch Derek. He still thinks he's got a shot and he just misses it and all too quickly the Ivy which is very little padding in front of the bricks comes up to bite him and Derek's still bending over in left field. He's still feeling the effects of that. While we have a moment, let's step aside for a station ID on the Chicago Cubs television network. This is WGN TV Chicago, America's number one sports station. Tom Brenneman back with Steve Stone at Wrigley Field in Chicago. It is a 6-3 Cardinal lead. They're going to intentionally pass the red-hot Greg Jeffries, sending him to first with Smith at second base and the left-handed hitting Ray Langford due up next. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the Chicago National League Ball Club, which has a right of approval of the announcers and is intended solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or the use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Chicago National League Ball Club is prohibited. Tommy, let me ask you a question. We both saw the same article in the paper today where Larry Himes said that there'll probably be no trades forthcoming and that he is very happy with the talent on his team at this point. Now, do you think that's something a general manager has to say at this point of the season? No. Because looking at the team, obviously the National League is telling it that it's an average ball club. A team 500, no more than three games above, no more than three games below, better than some of the teams not near as good as some of the better teams and can you have could you be happy with talent that's right in the middle of the pack 
Well, it's one and one to Langford with two on and two out. I, no, I don't think a general manager has to say anything. If a team is not playing well, the general manager can come out and say this team isn't playing well. And I don't know how much he can do in terms of trades because this organization doesn't exactly have a rich farm system. If you look at the numbers on Langford in this series, but well, it's very clear that the talent right now, even with all of the pitchers healthy, uh, they still had an ERA as a staff well above four with Morgan Hibbert and Harkey in the rotation. And, and even without the red hot start by Philadelphia, I just don't think that right now this team has the talent to win the division. And don't forget, Tom, the team is where it is with some career years out of a lot of their players. Mark Grace, a career year. Ray Sanchez, a career year. Jose Vizcaino, a career year. Rick Wilkins, a career year. And yet, with all of those players having great years, the team is still right in the middle. And you have to look at the bullpen as one of the reasons. Three and one to Ray Langford. But I don't think that the Cubs are in any way, shape, or form unique. No. In their desire to shore up their bullpen. I think there's a lot of teams around baseball that are feeling the same thing right now. 3 1 delivery. It's smacked into left field. May coming in and makes a grab to get McElroy out of the jam. No runs to hit. Two men left. We played five and a half at Wrigley. 6 3. Cardinals in front. A participating advertiser in Cubs baseball is Pepsi. Gotta have it. We're gonna have to bail. What about the Bud Light? No time. There's only one left. You take it. I'll never forget you. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Not so fast. Yes! It's amazing how it grew and grew. That little company you started in your garage. And now you've got an automobile whose drive for quality matches your own. The Buick Park Avenue Ultra. With its supercharged engine, the Park Avenue Ultra is proof you still take pride in what comes out of your garage. The official forecast for summer, 1993. Light to moderate breezes. Cooler temperatures gently falling utility bills. Conditions are expected to persist for the next 20 to 45 years. Other than that, everything's quiet. Hunter, the quiet fan. <laughs> well, we're back at Wrigley Field in Chicago. A 6-3 Cardinal lead over the Cubs. Good day to be in the sunshine, eh, Stoney? Except the clouds are moving in, Tom, and they're moving in from the west. And that's not too good. Sammy Sosa to begin things against Tewksbury. How about Sammy at home as opposed to Sammy on the road? So the Cubs might be thinking of leaving him here when they head on this long road trip after hitting 311 here at Wrigley. But having a tough time at 171 on the road, and the Cubs going on a four-city 13-game, 15-day road trip. Two-one pitch, hammered into left field. So the friendly confines certainly every bit of that for Sammy Sosa. As he begins the sixth with a single. Billy Shooter from the Cubs office would like to send a happy Father's Day to Billy Senior down in De Leon Springs, Florida. There you see the clouds. Still a beautiful day. And a good day for Sammy as he's hit the ball hard three times and could have easily been three for three. On a play hit at Todd Zeal that was rifled down to him but ruled an air. Well, we were mentioning Billy Shooter. We're going to 
take a quick shot of Billy here at the ballpark today. He's been with us for quite a while here in the Cub office. In turning, there's a base hit into left field by Rick Wilkins. And Billy Shooter out of Florida. Stand up and take a bow, sir. Bye back at home. Billy can see you. Look over this way. Up over here to the left. There you go. Say hello to Dad and happy Father's Day. Your last day has been great being with you, pal. Best on everything. If you want to get Billy a job, he'll be looking for one very soon. Well, now that he's a lame duck as far as internship is concerned. And we wish him all the best absolutely He's going out looking for gainful employment of course it's pretty hard to top the salary that he pulls down here with the Cubs but <laughs> other than that he should do okay Ray Sanchez <laughs> an RBI single and has bounced to third and he looks at a strike well Billy's only problem is that he's a Florida State Seminole we have to listen to all that propaganda <laughs> all the time Cubs have a chance here to put a dent in this lead and they would like to do it before Mike Perez and Lee Smith start getting loose in the bullpen. This will be two. Zeal to second, Pena to relay throw, and that takes a big bite out of this sixth inning threat. On to third is Sammy Sosa, but Sanchez the 5-4-3, making it two down in the inning. Pretty good pivot at second base by Geronimo Pena. Easy double play. The ball's hit hard right at Zeal and Pena no problems as he gets rid of the ball before Wilkins has a shot to get a piece of him. And so what looks so promising now is down to a situation maybe to drive home one for Eric Yelding. He's hit the ball pretty hard twice. And it's lifted in the air to left center field. Ray Lankford is there. And just like that, the inning is over. Tootsbury getting out of a tough spot. Two hits, one left. Terry back in the seventh. 6-3 Cardinals at the end of six. <laughs> Trouble with heartburn. Well, you could change your job. Change your lifestyle. Change your diet. A bon appetit. Or better still, reach for Rolaids. It absorbs acid fast to bring 100% relief to millions. So maybe you can't change your life, but you can get relief in original and calcium rich. Rolaids spells relief. Mm. The in your face fadeaway. Arc times velocity equals a three point shot. Translation Electric Avenue beats the shorts off of Sears. Scotty, just look at the Electric Avenue All-Star lineup. Sony, Panasonic, RCA, Apple, Maytag, GE. Plus, Electric Avenue will match any store's advertised price guaranteed. Teeny little guys, weren't they? Hey kids, join Cubs manager Jim Lefevre, Derek May, Sammy Sosa, and a host of Cubs players and coaches for the second annual All-Star Kids Clinic, sponsored by Dial Soap and WGN-TV. Don't miss your chance to go on the field at Wrigley and learn hitting, pitching, and fielding from the pros. There will be special appearance by Bozo the Clown, and everyone attending receives a Cubs sports bag filled with prizes. Tickets are just $10 per person. For more information, call 312-404-CUBS. The Chris Everett Special, celebrity interviews from a celebrity's point of view. Tonight at 10.30 on Channel 9. Hello again, everybody. Harry Carey with Steve Stone and Tom Grunemann. As we go into the top of the seventh, Jim Bullinger will be the new pitcher for the Cubs. Boy, it looked like they had something going in the sixth. First two men hit safely. They're on base. Nobody out. Sanchez hits a bullet, but right at Zeal, who turns it into an easy double play, and boom, just like that, the inning is over. Tom Hellman, who does a fine job in the visiting clubhouse, like to pass along happy Father's Day greetings to Len Hellman. And also Tom and his wife Mary would like to pass along happy Father's Day to his father-in-law, George Theobald. So Bullinger comes into the ball game at 1-0, on for the third time, a 7.71 ERA. Here's Mark Whitten. He's one out of three. The Phillies 
for trailing the Marlins three to one going in the bottom of the seventh. John Cruck hit a three run homer and the Phillies lead four three. The Phillies have changed pitches in the ninth and got to be Mitch isn't it got to be 11 now it's West Dave West. No wait a minute. It is Mitch number 12 on the board. There's a bouncing ball foul. Bullinger was used as a stopper and that's the role that he feels most comfortable in. However he views his role now as pretty much being a stopper for the seventh inning at this point because he cannot allow the Cardinals any more runs and he's got to go through some pretty good hitters. Look below two balls two strikes. Don't look now but those Atlanta Braves are coming. But there's seven and a half games behind the Giants who refuse to lose. Just like the Phillies in the, in the Eastern Division. Three balls, two strikes. The Budweiser blimp. Do they have to pay rent? They're, 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 they're always hanging around right over the ballpark. You know that home run Sammy Sosa hit. If a blip were over the left field bleachers, it might have touched it. What? One of the highest home runs, not the farthest, but a hit as high as any home run we've seen in a long time. As part of its 1993 U.S. tour, the Bud One Airship, which is in attendance, or will be in attendance at the All Star Game in San Diego, will be in Baltimore for this year's All Star Game. Here is Tom Zeal. He's two out of two. He walked once. He's driven in a run. Or he scored a run, rather. One strike and nothing. Harry, you talked about back. the Braves trying to catch up San Francisco. The big problem has been the Braves number one in pitching this year but second to last in hitting and that's been a problem all year long and I know, I, I know they signed Deion Sanders to a big contract. There goes the runner the pitch. High he's in there with a stolen base. They had a chance to get him but Wilkins throw was too high the yelding. Witten stealing his seventh base of the year. And Jim Bollinger is going to have to work on that leg kick because the Cardinals will run on him and run on him consistently as the throw is up there. As I was saying about Deion Sanders, I know they signed him to the big contract, which is which infuriated Otis Nixon. And Deion's hitting about 218, 219. And I think, although in the future Deion's probably the guy, right now I think Otis Nixon could probably outplay him. Bouncing ball. Yeah, Yelding has it over the first. And Zeal did his job. Naturally, he's trying to get a base hit. But failing at that, he made sure he hit the ball on the first base side of the infield to enable Witten to advance to third. And now that forces the infield to come in for the player to play. Pena has had a resurgence from the left side. He was hitting just 140 coming into this series as a left-hand hitter. And he now has five hits the last two days as a left-hand hitter. Infield in the pitch. I'll tell you something, Steve. I don't care where they're batting in this batting order. Every guy coming up for four days has hit nothing but line drive. They have had 11 hits today. They had 12 yesterday. They had 10 the other day and 17 the first day. So I don't know why the batting average is so much lower than the Cubs the, the way they've been hitting the ball in this series. But of course they catch the Cubs pitching staff out of commission. 
three of them on, on the disabled list, three of the five starters. You're on the mound in this situation. You think strikeout first of all, but you think everything down because when you bring the infield in, you have to throw a ground ball. Foul the back, two and two. Florida. It looks like Mitch Williams may have picked up another save. Two balls, two strikes. Infield in. Curve a little high. Three balls, two strikes. Line drive like a bullet. In the right field, another run is in. Look at Sammy Sosa's throw, but he's in there with a double. And so there's a 12th hit. Another line drive for two bases. 13th double of the year for Payne. He gets a fastball right down the middle and just rifles it into right field. So Payne now has 12 doubles this year. And he was three out of four yesterday, and he's three out of four today. What else is new? Thirteen Tom doubles. Pagnazzi. Excuse me. Pagnazzi. Well, Homer with a man on in the second. And Eric Yelding wants to talk to Jim Bullinger. Well, he wants to remind Bullinger to keep a close eye on Peña at second base. Jose Guzman forgot about Peña, and he's probably the fastest of all of these Cardinals. And he stole third easily. So you have to take a look or two back at him to make sure you vary your cadence and vary your rhythm home or he's going to take off. Pena. Big lead. The ninth is uh, empty up there in the Philadelphia Florida game. I thought they were going to put up the final score, but the Marlins are still batting the top of the ninth. Pull them with a chain. One out. One in. One on. And the Cardinals lead seven to three. Fly ball down the right field line. Everybody chasing it. Base hit. The runner will only go to third base off second. A pop fly single by Pagnazzi. Now the Cardinals have runners at first and third with only one out. And the pitcher, Tewksbury, coming up. Not only are the Cardinals hitting the ball hard, but they're also hitting it in perfect spots. And when the offense gets tuned up, you see things like this. That ball was blown back into fair territory. It looked like it was going to go foul. And he couldn't have thrown it out there any better. So Tewksbury taking a long look down at Bucky Dent. And it could be that they're going to ask him just to sacrifice. A big crowd on hand. This series will draw somewhere near 160,000 people. Runners at first and third. Dukesbury came into this one as a pretty good hitter. So Joe Torrey with a big lead might let him swing away. Bouncing ball. Nice play by Vizcaino. And they got him in the hot box. Now he's trying to score. And Vizcaino catches him and tags him out. 
So Vizcaino started the play and he ended the play. Runners are in first and second, two out. And the Cubs do it without the runners advancing. Jose does not have a shot at the double play, but he does have Pena hung up. The Cubs do it with just the one throw back to Vizcaino after the original throw. And Pena stopping and starting, stopping and starting, and Jose just runs him down. A fine play. The ball was sharply hit by Tewksbury. So now two out of runners in. Runners is first and second. Seven to three, St. Louis ahead. Bernard Gilkey, who's one out of four in this game. One ball, no strikes. The Phillies have beaten Florida 4-3. Mitch Williams the save. <coughs> one ball, one strike. Outside. It's interesting to watch you, this Kaino running Pena towards the plate and finally tagging him out. Line drive, great play by Sanchez to end the inning. So only one run scored out of all that. A walk and two hits. Two men are left on base. And we go into the bottom half of the second. Seventh inning with St. Louis leading seven to three. All right. Let me hear you. All right, Gary, a one, a two, a three. Take me out to the quad. Hey, me out. Skies meals for kids. The food kids love. Because when you're big, you should always remember the little. United. Come fly the friendly skies. A brave reporter, a political murder, a deadly cover up. Andy Garcia, Amy Irving, and Robert Duvall, a show of force. Come on, at 11 30 on Channel 9. Doug Jennings will lead it off as the pinch hitter for Jim Bullinger. Seven to three. The Cubs need some runs. 
the pitch. There's the looper and in the foul territory. And out of play, Zeal made a fine effort. Couldn't reach it. And the count is even up with the ball and the strike. John Crux, three-run homer in the bottom of the seventh, gave the Phillies a four-to-three lead, a win over Florida's Ma Marlins. Boy, that Florida team plays everybody close. One ball, one strike. The Yankees have shut out Minnesota eight to nothing. The skies are darkening a little bit. Dan Plesak getting ready. High pop fly. Same position can be caught this time. And Zeal does grab it. So Jennings fouls to Zeal. Those Yankee boy are only three games out. And they're only one behind Toronto, who's second. Boston playing at Toronto is tied up 2-2 in the bottom of the eighth. Cubs have had some opportunities today, but one of the big problems is Tewksbury refuses to walk anybody in the middle of a rally. He just keeps throwing strike after strike. And once again, as is his custom, no walks in the ball game. Dwight Smith trying to get something going. Fouls it off. Baltimore is leading Cleveland four to two in the bottom of the sixth. Detroit over Milwaukee, seven to nothing at the end of six. Detroit got five runs in the first inning. The White Sox got five in the first in California. One ball, two strikes. Thirty-eight thousand two hundred and eighty-eight paid today. There's a high fly ball will be caught. Langford is there and he has it. Two away. Over 153,000 saw the four-game series here between the Cubs and the Cardinals. 155,000. The gates have been great, but having trouble winning, and it's. It's a shame if you're going to lose and you lose with the best you have at your disposal, it's one thing. But when you lose because your entire so-called pitching staff is on the disabled list, it's something else. Not very encouraging. Two balls, two strikes, two out, nobody on. fooled him and this Kaino goes down swinging at the end of seven seven to three Cardinal the film Time magazine calls a terrific movie 
I came into this game for the action, the excitement. Go anywhere, travel light. A remarkable accomplishment. The New York Times. My God, it works. And Best Picture, the L.A. Film Critics Association. We're all in this together, Jim. Robert De Niro, Michael Palin, and Bob Hoskins. A television premiere, Brazil. Monday night at 11.30 on Channel 9. A participating advertiser in Cubs baseball is Fleer Ultra Baseball Cards. Fleer Ultra. You can't buy a better baseball card. So I'm barbecuing for 30. I got the best steaks, I got the cheap charcoal, and I got burned. Fire's on! Don't get burned by cheap charcoal. Buy the best. Kingsford. The sure fight. Thank you. To all of you attracted by Buick's reputation for quality, but who think a new Buick is beyond your means, may I make the following suggestion? Go see the new Buick Skylark Custom. It is every bit a quality Buick. And as the most affordable Buick for 1993, it makes Buick quality more attractive than ever. Any deodorant will do if you're at a standstill. But movers and shakers need the 24-hour power of Speed Stick Antiperspirant. It's 110% protection against wetness and odor. 110% protection for movers and shakers. Speed Stick. Hosted by Eddie Murphy. The exotic and tantalizing MTV Movie Awards. Wednesday night at 7 on Channel 9. Harry Carey and Steve Stone as we go into the top of the eighth. Dan Plezak will be the new pitcher. First man he'll face will be Ozzie Smith, who's one out of four, double to left in the sixth. Plezak, a 5.40 ERA, on for the 20th time. He appeared in the ball game yesterday through a scoreless inning. One ball, one strike. And the Navy's in town, enjoying the ball game, enjoying it if he's a Cardinal fan, not enjoying it. Otherwise, the ground ball to second, this <coughs> yielding throws him out. Later tonight on WGN, a TV reporter becomes the news when she gets too involved in a story she's reporting. Amy Irving and Robert Duvall star in an encore performance of a show of force tonight at 11.30 on WGN Channel 9. Wayne Messmer, who does such an outstanding job singing our national anthem, he's a junior. His dad, Wayne Messmer, senior. He wants to wish a happy Father's Day, too, so we happily do that. And there's... There's Junior, Wayne Messmer. One out, nobody on. Jeffries might be a little tired. He lined hard to left, he tripled and scored, he doubled and scored, and he was intentionally passed. Ball three. This turned out to be a great trade for St. Louis, sending Felix Jose to Kansas City, and he's doing a nice job for them. But Jeffries has been outstanding for the Cardinals. Three balls and the strike. San Francisco losing at Houston. Four to one at the end of five. There's a pitch popped up. Yelding is there now. Sammy Sosa yells him off the play and makes the catch. Two gone. It's a much easier play for the outfielder coming in. And for the infielder going back, he tries to get the ball until he hears the voice of the outfielder calling him off. And Jeffrey's wow. not very happy with that swing. <laughs> oh, come on, Greg. Don't be so greedy. You got two out of three, a double and a triple already. <laughs> but a good hitter wants to hit every time up, and he's a good hitter. Langford. Fouls in our back. Remember Chris Chambliss? Not only was he a fine hitter, and I guess it came in his most prominence with the Yankees, 
But then he went to the minor leagues. He, he's been fighting to get a job as a manager in the big leagues. He's already proven that he can win in the minor league. And it's just a matter of time. I'm sure Chris Chambliss will be a big league manager one of these days. But he's also the, the batting coach. As you saw, Langford has fanned eight times in this series. Shaw came out. That's a ninth time in the four game series. The Langford is out on strike. We go in the bottom of the eighth. Seven to three in favor of the Cardinals. edition subsets 93 flare ultra proof you still can't buy a better baseball card match light charcoal mm. has just mm. the right amount of lighter fluid already added that's why there's only one match for match light match light from kingsford can't believe he broke it at the company picnic incredible our employee health plan covers him right not deductibles or co-payments. So he has to lay out his own money. Gaps in your health plan can be costly. Aflac can help. Aflac is a leader in supplemental insurance with 35 years of dependable service. Today, employees of over 80,000 companies count on Aflac for the peace of mind to get on with life. Any ideas? Yeah, Aflac. Aflac, insuring over 35 million people worldwide. The Chris Everett Special. Celebrity interviews from a celebrity's point of view. Tonight at 10.30 on Channel 9. A brave reporter, a political murder, a deadly cover-up. Andy Garcia, Amy Irving, and Robert Duvall, a show of force. Tonight at 11.30 on Channel 9. Harry Carey at Rigby Field. Mark Graves hits the first pitch solidly in the right field for a base hit his second of the day. And now will bring up Derek May, who's 0 for 3. That'll send the bullpen to work for the Cardinals, and they're getting up and getting ready in a hurry. Tewksbury's completed only one of his previous 13 starts. Cardinals only have two complete games as a team. Derek May. I call Tommy Glavin of the Atlanta Braves scored his ninth victory of the year today as the Braves beat Montreal at Montreal five to one. Rob Murphy and Mike Perez loosening up in the bullpen. Another base hit in the center field. And a, again the Cubs have runners at first and second with nobody out. That happened in the sixth. Only have Sanchez hit the ball very hard, but right at Zeal, who started around the horn double play, and Yelding flat out on the first pitch. Here comes now, Joe Torrey. Joe Torrey coming out. I think that he's going to go to Mike Perez in the bullpen. Perez, a sinker baller, and he's going to look for the ground ball off the bat of Sammy Sosa. Five well, as yes, that's going to be a new pitcher. Perez coming in, and we'll be back to tell you more about it in a moment. He's back. It's the MTV Movie Awards. Love. 
hosted by Eddie Murphy. The exotic and tantalizing MTV Movie Awards. Wednesday night at 7 on Channel 9. The Chicago Bulls have won the NBA championship for the second straight season. If I have anything to say about it, there's one thing Chicago won't repeat this year. Well, a spree of violence, looting, and arson in the wake of... When we've needed your support, you've never let us down. So don't let us down now. Left more than 1,000 people arrested and 93 police officers injured. If we make it a three-peat on the court, let's not make a repeat in the streets. Perez will be the new pitcher. He has won four and lost two, save three. He's Mike. been in 34 games for the Cardinals. Mike Perez is a sinker baller, and that's one of the reasons why Joe Torre brought him into this game. There's the last appearance. He appeared in this series through two-thirds of an inning. Didn't give the Cubs any runs. And his career against the Cubs, they haven't done much with him. A 105 ERA. This is his 19th appearance against him, and Sammy Sosa can get the Cubs back in this ball game in a hurry. Tewksbury again did not walk anybody. And so his average of walks per game continues to go down. Nobody out. Sosa with a home run and a single. Perez first pitch. Curveball in there. We're in the bottom of the eighth. The sky is getting darker. Fouled out of play on two. Colorado leads San Diego one to nothing at the end of five. The Dodgers are out in front of the Reds six three in the eighth. The Giants just tied up. Houston with three in the sixth. Pitch is high. The White Sox are making their five runs in the first inning. Four of them were hit in by George Bell, a grand slam homer. One ball, two strikes. There's a long drive will be caught in center field. Sosa flies out. Tewksbury has given up only six bases on balls now in 90 innings. And that's all they wanted from Perez to just get the one dangerous right hand hitter out. And we'll have more for you as the new pitcher trots in in a moment. anything to say about it there's one thing Chicago won't repeat this year well a spree of violence looting and arson in the wake of when we've needed your support you've never let us down so don't let us down now Left more than a thousand people arrested and 93 police officers injured if we make it a three-peat on the court let's not make a repeat in the streets so you can't look at you know Beverly Hills cop or raw and go oh that's Eddie Murphy all you know about me is what I showed you, you know. Sometimes I, I go to the grocery store and I read stuff in these newspapers and I go, what? Where did they get this from? This is ridiculous. I don't believe in love at first sight. I believe in lust at first sight. <laughs> exactly. The Chris Everett Special. Celebrity interviews from a celebrity's point of view. Tonight at 10.30 on Channel 9. Ron Murphy, veteran left-hander. 
I think he's been in every game of the series. And he has been in every game of the series. So he's been a durable left-hander. On for the 34th time with a 1-4 and four record, a 3.49 ERA. And the first man you'll face will be Rick Wilkins. We have another right-hander getting ready in the bullpen. Seven to three in favor of the Cardinals. Wilkins is one out of three so far today. Strike and nothing. One out, two on. The outfield straight away. Zeal way off the line at third. He started the swing, he held up. They appeal the Joe West says no he did not swing. One ball one strike. Double play ball out at second out at first out of the inning. Two hits no runs one man left at the end of eight. Still 7 of 3 St. Louis. A participating advertiser in Cubs baseball is United. Chicago's hometown airline is proud to be the official airline of the Chicago Cubs. To celebrate Buick's 90th anniversary, we proudly introduce the 90th anniversary Le Sabre. Le Sabre has a proven reputation for quality and the highest pre-sale value in its class. Now you get all this Buick quality, comfort, and elegance at a special anniversary price. The 90th anniversary Buick LeSaver. Quality it's competition. Just can't hold a candle to. I got a phone call this morning from one of our oldest customers. He fired us. After 20 years, he fired us. Said he didn't know us anymore. I think I know why. We used to do business with a handshake, face to face. Now it's a phone call and a fax. I'll get back to you later with another fax, probably. Well, folks, something's got to change. That's why we're going to set out for a little face to face chat with every customer we have. But Ben, that's got to be over 200 cities. I don't care. If you're the kind of business that still believes personal service deserves a lot more than lip service, welcome to United. That's the way we've been doing business for over 60 years. Ben, where are you going? To visit that old friend who fired us this morning. United, come fly the friendly skies. A brave reporter, a political murder, a deadly cover-up. Andy Garcia, Amy Irving, and Robert Duvall, a show of force. Tonight at 11.30 on Channel 9. Harry Carey and Steve Stone back at the ballpark. We go into the ninth inning. Oh, it's an amazing record on Tewksbury. In 90 and two-thirds innings so far this year, he has walked not a single man, and he has fanned 38. If you get a two strikeouts per one walk ratio, they say it's pretty good. Three for one outstanding. For the one terrific. I wonder what 38 to nothing is. One ball, one strike. There's a ground ball. Nice play by Vizcaino over the first. 
six walks and 90 and two thirds innings. 38 strikeouts. An amazing mark. Put four more on that today as Bob Tewksbury went seven plus innings, gave up 10 hits and three runs. The aforementioned no walks and four strikeouts. There's a pitch a little bit outside. Tom Zeal, two out of three today. Please act. There's a drive, a center. Dwight Smith is back. Two out. Look in the Cardinal dugout. Two out. Geronimo Pena. Three out of four for the second game in a row. One ball, one strike. The Budweiser blimp still circling around the ballpark. And it looks as if there might be a little rain. One ball, two strikes. Stuck him out. Payton a call out of strikes. One, two, three. We go into the bottom of the ninth. The Cardinals lead seven to three. A twin blade from Bick? What's in it for me? I'm a big man. Big man. It's different. A twin for normal skin and a twin for sensitive, right? I'm a big man. I'm a sensitive guy, right? So I tried it. Big man. It's good. It's I'm great. A big man. The big twin select, normal, sensitive. It really blew me away. It made a big man out of me. I'm a big man. It's time for the Roll Aids Relief Break, brought to you by Roll Aids. Roll Aids spells 100% relief. Minnesota Twins reliever Rick Aguilera leads the AL with 12 saves and 36 points. He's 12 for 12 in save opportunities. The Royals' Jeff Montgomery and the Red Sox' Jeff Russell are close behind. The Atlanta Braves' new stopper Mike Stanton leads the entire majors with 16 saves and has not blown an opportunity all season. Mitch Williams continues to provide stability in the bullpen for the first place Phillies. Want to break a European's heart? Let him test drive a Buick Park Avenue Ultra for two weeks, then take it away. You see, the Ultra, with its supercharged engine, luxury appointments, and Buick quality, is built in such limited quantities, it's just not available in Europe yet. Want to break a European's heart? Let him drive an Ultra, then take it away. Harry Carey back at Wrigley Field. Here's a Buick game summary up to this moment. The Cardinals are leading the Cubs 7-3. Sammy Sosa hit a homer. He's hit four of his last six hits have been homers. The Cubs out homer the Cardinals in this series, 7-5. Tewksbury didn't walk a man today. His total for the year is six walks in 90 and two-thirds innings. Here's Sanchez. Omar Oliveris on the mound. Recently activated off the disabled list. The record one and two. The ERA 388 on for the 16th time. Two balls, no strike. Oliveris. He won one, lost two, save one. Strike call. Watch away Frank Pulley. Two 
That evens it up two and two. We're in the bottom of the ninth. Tracy Woodson now playing at third base, replacing Todd Zeal. There's a fly ball in the center field, easy out. Sanchez flies to Langford. One away. And the Cardinals have won the first two out of three in this series. They're going for three out of four. It's a good time for Yelding to think about bunning, depending on where Woodson is going to set up at third base. The Cubs need base runners to keep it alive. One ball, no strikes. Candy Maldonado is going to pinch it next. One ball, one strike. White Sox leading at California, six to nothing at the end of two. Two balls and a strike. The Red Sox are tied at Toronto, playing in the bottom of the 11th, 2-2. The Yankees beat Minnesota, 8-0. There's a drive, way back, it might be, it could be, it is a home run for Eric Yelding, his first of the year. And that makes the score 7-4. First home run, first run batted in. And Montgomery Ward donates $100 to Cubs Care for the blast off the bat of Eric Yelding. Yeah, Yelding is, uh, he hit a home run for Houston. That's his. He's hit two home runs previously in the big leagues. This is third major league homer. Candy Maldonado is a hitter. That was the first home run since May 19th of 91. There's a high pop foul. Woodson getting under it. So is Pagnazzi, and Woodson makes the catch. Two gone. Yelding had one home run for Houston in 1991. And he also had one in 1990. One each year. His last home run also came off the St. Louis Cardinals, and it was Ken Hill, who is now with Montreal. Here is Dwight Smith, seven to four. In favor of the Cardinal. Oliveris. Whoop, hit by a pitch ball. Dwight Smith is hit by a pitch ball. He walks slowly down to first base. Second time that Dwight Smith has been hit as his fastball sails up and in and just barely gets a piece of him. Now comes Joe Torrey now. Bullpen up and going. And as you would expect, it's Lee Smith. And now it's a save situation. And so Lee Smith can go for the lead in the National League in save. He's tied with Randy Myers at the moment, each having 22. Uh, this gives them an opportunity to forge into the lead with 23. Another game. Los Angeles beats Cincinnati 6-3. The Giants have come up with three in the top of the sixth to tie the Houston Astros 4-4. Four, four. Let's pause here for identification. This is WGN-TV Chicago. America's number one sports station. Colorado is leading San Diego one to nothing in the bottom of the sixth at Colorado. Philadelphia came from behind to beat Florida 4-3. Atlanta downed Montreal 5-1. The Cubs here are trailing 7-4 in the bottom of the ninth. 
in the American League. The White Sox, George Bell hit a grand slam in the first. They lead six to nothing at the end of two. Baltimore out in front of Cleveland, 4-3 in the seventh. Detroit out leading Milwaukee seven to one at the end of seven. The Yankees shut out the Twins. Oakland's leading Kansas City four to one in the third. And Boston and Toronto tied 2-2 in the 10th. There is a look at the town and also the sky. We've had bad weather the last couple of nights here. And kind of threatening right now. And Pittsburgh usually gets high weather the next day, so we might be running into some bad weather. Yeah. Our game tomorrow will be an afternoon game. Getting underway at 2 o'clock Chicago time. And there's Lee Smith. And he's coming in looking for his 23rd save. He would have saved three in this series. And all he needs is one out. And the Cubs trying to keep it alive. One base runner will bring Mark Grace to bat, representing the tying run. Tewksbury, of course, the pitcher of record. And here is this guy, you know, filing off the first pitch. A runner at first, two out, seven to four. Fair ball, strike call is for a slider. Smith in 25 and two thirds innings is fan, 24 men. High pop foul, a lot of play. Remember Keeley Smith, Sonny King, and Freddie Bell at the Drury Lane in Oak Brook Terrace tomorrow night. A little bit inside a curveball. One ball, two strikes, <coughs> two out. Viscaino with one out of four. <laughs> Bouncing ball, the game is over. Jeffries, field of Viscaino's. Ground ball, stepped on the bag to retire the side. So, the Cubs score one in the ninth on Yelding's homer. And they strand one. And the Cardinals have won the series three games out of four. And Lee Smith saved every game they won. Well, Harry, it looked like such a promising homestand because the Cubs started out with three straight wins against the Florida Marlins. They cooled off a hot team. But an equally hot team, the St. Louis Cardinals, came to town. And the Cubs just didn't play well in the series, losing three out of four. And it looks like the Cardinals might be the one team that would have a shot at Philadelphia. Although Philadelphia keeps coming back and winning games, you figured they would lose, and they still have a big lead, nine and a half games over the Cardinals as the Cubs fade back to 15 games back and now are two games under 500 as they head on the road for a four-city, 13-game, 15-day road trip. And the best pitcher that we have available right now with the three of our main starters on the disabled list Frank Castillo is a loser today, and his record is for the year. He's won two, and he's lost five. Well, there'll be some interesting matchups because 60% of the starting rotation is on the disabled list. So you have Jose Guzman and Frank Castillo. Then you're going to fill in with Jose Bautista. You're going to give, certainly, Sean Bosky a shot. 
And we'll have to see then what happens with the rotation depending on the off days. But Morgan looks like he's going to be lost for three weeks here. He Hibbard before the game said he was feeling a lot better but still on the DL nonetheless. And Mike Harkey not feeling particularly good and they're not sure when he's going to be able to come back from that sore shoulder. So the starting pitching at least in disarray and middle relief for the Cubs have been a problem as we know. And if you don't get the game to Randy Myers then it becomes a very tough afternoon. Let me ask you. Uh, I know it's common. That's a higher classification to bring up your pitches when you need them from your AAA farm club. But like in the case of the Cubs they've seen all these pitches before. They've been up before for one two years. Now for a team looking to the future and I would imagine that's what Larry Himes and Jim Lefevre must be looking towards now. Why wouldn't it be a good idea if you, if you want to call up another pitcher from the minor leagues to bring up the best you have at double A or even the a, a let them learn how to pitch up here with good coaching from a guy like Billy Connors rather than uh, waste another year or two of moving your way up the ladder from A to double A to triple A and maybe be no better a pitcher after three years that it takes you to get to triple A than you are right now. And maybe with the better coaching here that you get, maybe their development would be hastened considerably. Well, I think the, if the Cubs had a guy like that, they might do that. And there's a young man at AAA by the name of Steve Traxel, who's thrown the ball very well at times. And you remember the number one draft choice, Lance Dixon. Apparently his arm is getting stronger now, and he's throwing the ball a little bit better. So we don't really know what's on the mind of Larry Himes. We do know that he said in the paper today that trades are not going to be forthcoming that he likes the talent on the team he's going to go with what he's got right now and becomes a difficult situation for a team that is second or third in the league in hitting depending on what day you look at it hasn't scored quite as many runs as you want but the batting averages are up there but you're giving up six seven runs a game and it's real hard to beat anybody if you have to continually outscore them by wide margins when they're getting 13 hits and seven runs seemingly on a daily basis. All right, we'll be back more following this message. There are a lot of reasons people walk into my True Value store. Sometimes it's convenience. We're right in the neighborhood. Sometimes they want advice, and sometimes they're bargain hunting, looking for true values. Like the Ortho Cleanup Bonus Pack. Two sizes, just $9.99. The 36-inch by 50-foot roll of Gilbert and Bennett Diamond Guard Fencing is just $19.99. And their fence posts start at just $1.59 each. You know, the name says it all. True value. The universe is full of certainties. The Earth will rotate every 23.9 hours. Halley's Comet will return in 68 years. And soon, nearly 15 million people will go bowling. Introducing Strike It Rich from the Illinois Lottery, the instant game where you could win up to $300 cash, but are guaranteed to win a game of bowling. So you can't lose, you can't stop it, so don't even try. Strike It Rich. Got a second? Play this instant. There are many ways to save, like putting your money here or reading your money here in the Chicago Tribune. Get your money in the Chicago Tribune. Your money's expert writers guide you to smart investments and ways to save. And is the new home of Chicagoland's best classified, your money has hundreds of ways to save every day. Get your money in the Chicago Tribune. Your money, Monday through Friday, in the newspaper that pays for itself. The Chicago Tribune. You can always spot a neighborhood with pride. Maybe it's a little cleaner, a little nicer place to be. All because somebody cared enough to make it that way. Like your neighborhood 76 station. Here, every gasoline is specially formulated to keep your engine clean and running smooth. We're rather proud of that. 76. Go with the spirit. We've changed our miles. We've changed our styles. We've changed our lines. We've changed our signs. We've changed his plays and we've changed our ways. Yeah, things are changing at Montgomery Ward. Things are changing at Montgomery Ward. 
The Budweiser play of the day is this blow by Tom Pagnazzi. A homer with one on and increasing Cardinal lead to four to nothing. And that was the ball game as they went on to beat the Chicago Cubs by the score of seven to four. The producer director of Cubs baseball is Arnie Harris. The coordinating producer is Bill Borson. Our associate producer is Joe Carneal. the Cubs will be in Pittsburgh and our next, our next telecast will be starting at 2 o'clock Chicago time as the Cubs open a series against the Pittsburgh Pirates. Harry Carey from Rigby Field. So long everybody. Chicago Cubs baseball on Channel 9. The Cubs are brought to you by Budweiser, fresh, pure, natural. Proud to be your bud. True Value Hardware Stores. Got a tough job to do? You can do it with True Value Hardware Stores. Buick and your local Buick dealers. Remember Buick, the new symbol for quality in America. AFLAP, insuring over 35 million people worldwide. And by your local 76 dealers, who invite you to go with the spirit, the spirit of 76. Not many things.